for at least like a weekend or something, go to the coast or do something. Yeah. Well, I will be in uh, St. Louis next week, business trip. So I won't be here, but closest thing to a vacation I'll see for the moment. <laughs> Well, I'm almost done with all the stuff I got going on. Finally, we'll finish my sister's house, John, and um, and Gilbert was helping me a lot. Gilbert did the floors and a bunch of other stuff for me. So almost done with that, and done burying my nephew and helping my niece and all them. So it's almost time for a breather. <laughs> you need a vacation from all the work you're doing when you're not working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but now. Oh, yeah. But now I'm going to have to have surgery. Okay. But a little bit of corporal tunnel or something? Yeah, I, I didn't know I had it. They, But I want to go see a chiropractor or try to find one because I was reading online. They said sometimes that helps. I don't know. I just I want to be cut the last thing that I do, you know. But if yeah, I have to... Like, I, I, I get pains in some places and they go away and they come back again. I think it's part of life. Yeah, well, it's nice. Uh, There's a point where, um, where I'm driving it, I'm driving, my hands fall asleep, and they go numb, and they hurt, and I can't even hold the string well. Oh, dang. I've been like that for a couple of years, but it's just gotten really bad. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Fabio. <laughs> And everybody's clicking on. You see my background, Gilbert? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boys. <laughs> I just learned how to do it about 30, 35 minutes ago. I was telling John, I did it. I said, man, John's going to get kicked out of this because I just figured out how to do it finally. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> so I've been trying to add it, and I finally saw that little plus sign on the Zoom thing, and I clicked it, and it said like a, like a download thing. So then I went and did your screen, and I got to work like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every week, I'm going to have a different kind of background because I don't know how to add it. <laughs> well, you, can, you can do whatever background you want on it, you know, and, you know, some computers let you do more than others. I had a, I had a picture of Oakland, Maryland on it for the longest time, and had, uh, on Saturday mornings, we lost the ability to do the Zoom, and so somebody and uh, Joseph told us about Google Meet, which you don't have to pay for; it's totally free. Oh, so that's pretty cool. If you ever got <laughs> interested, he could tell you all about it, walk you through it. Did everybody get the emails I sent out this morning? Yeah, I did. I yeah. saw it and I got it and I'm into it, but then it said you have a separate meeting going on, and he sent us another link about five minutes ago. Okay, I'll get into that one. See, I wasn't sure if it was the right one or not because I did it from my iPhone. Cause yeah. I was having trouble with my internet, so I did it from my iPhone. And I don't know if it went through right or not, but I guess it did because y'all got it. My internet was down at the house, so I used my iPhone with that data deal, and it just didn't work. Man, I've been I've been so lost like the last month with my nephew and everything else, John. It's been crazy. Um, the trash man didn't pick up our trash today. We have like private trash out here, and I called him and said, "Hey, what happened? You didn't pick up my trash last week or this week?" And then uh, they I left a the message. They called me back. They go, "We need to pay your bills." Like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> small detail. <laughs> <laughs> So, so my wife called and paid it for the whole year because I forget. I don't like I like pay everything by the year because then I forget. <laughs> so I got yelled at from my wife for not paying the trash bill. So now it's good till next December. Yeah, but you've like, been so busy. Yeah, I've been like crazy busy. Yeah, it is six thirty six. Yeah, one more minute, see if David's gonna check in here. He's, he's right the last minute. So how did um the fellowship go last week? It was me and uh Tony. Was... <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Oh 
Well, I'm sending out an email next month, the 19th. I'm giving. I'm gonna send an email out every five days to remind y'all the 19th. The 19th. I'll do that email right now, but I don't know where y'all want to try next. Yeah, you and Tony. Mm. That's crazy. It's a nice enough yeah, audio now. I didn't have audio earlier. My speakers weren't working. I had to completely restart my, my laptop. I had oh, never done no. that before. I had that problem with my old old uh, computer. And I got to the point, it said, no more updates. I bought this one about two, about a month or two before. It said, no more updates. <laughs> oh, man. They want you to get a new one about every five or six years. Anything that's got a computer in it, you, something's not working, first thing you do, restart. If it's oh, yeah, that's working, right. Restart that's again. Right. <laughs> all right. If it don't work at work, we reboot. It mm -hmm. used to be all control delete, but you got to reboot it now sometimes. Whether it's your computer sometimes laptop. you got a program to come back in, and that works sometimes too. Smart TV, router, printer. Call John. Um, car. Yeah, you're right. Even your car. My wife will occasionally when it's either too cold or too hot, uh, too humid or something, her car will act up. You know, button lights come on and something. And I said, just stop, turn the car off, count to 20, turn it back on. And she does it. She goes, oh, yeah, it's good now. No, no, no. There's a trick for most American cars and some import cars. You know how you get those cold lights to kick on sometimes when it's like cold or hot, when it rains, like you get your ABS sensors wet and stuff and they won't go off? <coughs> All you do is just go out there and disconnect the, it's not messed up your radio, disconnect your ground from your battery for a couple minutes and put it back on and then you should clear all your codes again. You disconnect the ground. Huh. I learned that like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago and I've been doing it since. <laughs> if it yeah, comes back on again, then then you have a problem. It's not a glitch. <laughs> yeah, but Pedro, remember the old days where you used to just put it in neutral and then uh, push start it. You know, you push the car, and then put it in gear, and it'll start up. Yep, that's I the old that. days. Pop the car. <laughs> yep. yep. Pop the clutch. Pop oh. the clutch. There you go. Yep. I'm going to open it up in prayer. If most of us are here. Kevin, my background's for you and, and John. I just figured out how to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're the cowboy. Well, I had to respond here, Kevin. Kevin, you know, when he showed me that. Oh, wow, absolutely. <laughs> oh, maybe I can get uh, San Antonio Spurs next week. I don't know. <laughs> Father God, first of all, I just want to thank you and glorify you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. And um, I want to thank you for BSF. I ask you to fill us with your spirit, Lord, and fill us with your mm -hmm. word and and give us knowledge and give us grace as we, we go over your word, Lord. Help us understand it and, and see this, the true meaning of it, Lord. I just want to thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pedro. Thank you. Anybody look at the, the lecture? I did. I did Very not. briefly. What truth did y'all get from the lecture? So I, what I took from it, it was an interesting question for Matt that I had never considered before. He asked, who do you identify with in the room as Mary is washing Jesus' feet? Because you got Mary, you got Jesus, you got his apostles, uh, 11 of them have one kind of thought, probably. You got Judas with another kind of thought. You got the Pharisees with probably another kind of thought. And he was describing what they were probably all thinking. And it was like, gee, I wonder which one I am. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't, because the lecture moves on, I didn't think about it anymore. I just wrote down what he and and one of the other outputs of it was when have you resisted God's plan for your life? 
That's, uh, you know, well, I, I really have to pause have too, you know, because I, I wasn't sure when I resisted it, per se, other than the story I shared, but I just, but I don't know uh -huh. that he, you know, after that, don't, I, I can't think of a time that I've said, no way, Lord, that can't be right. It's kind of like, well, okay, Lord, well, <laughs> let's see what you Please got. You. Another thing is sometimes you say, oh, let me try this out, Lord. And then you try it out and you find out, well, okay, his way is better than yours. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's kind of one of those interesting oh. questions, right? Like, when do we resist uh, what was good? I guess we call it sin and it kind of makes it easy. <laughs> ah, you know, there's a, that's a good point that I hadn't. Hadn't thought about it from that angle, because that would be also, I guess, applicable. When did you kind of sin when that wasn't God's plan? Mm -hmm. Now there's all kinds of things that I've done. But I'm going to go with a plan that he revealed that I didn't like. <laughs> sin he already revealed. That, that's a, been a plan forever, and I just, I guess, chose to ignore it. No, I think for me, it's like, um, you know, when I moved back from Indiana back home to San Antonio and, um, you know, at my church, you know, the way, you know, you know how they assign you to different Bible study class, right? So, so they put me in, you know, in singles class. I'm like, I don't think so. I'm not looking for a wife. I'm not looking for a girlfriend. I just, I just want to serve and I just want a job, you know, but the funny thing was that, um, you know, I everything that could go wrong, you know, was going wrong because, uh, you know, I just loved that obedience. I said I wanted to just be in, you know, men's class. Well, lo and behold, you know, um, you know, the first time I saw my wife right there, you know, she she sings in the church, you know, and then I asked her out. Uh, but you know, in a short, you know, to make the story short, everything started going right at that point because my, you know, what I was thinking that was why I used that word to discern. And I'm saying to myself, why would God be telling me, you know, to look for a wife when I'm trying to find a job? You know, I just got back home, you know. But, you know, everything that could go right went right as soon as I started dating my wife. And I just told her, I said, look, man, you know, I don't feel like dating. You know, I'm going to marry you. I've driven a Rolls Royce before. I don't need to test drive one. <laughs> She's like, man, you crazy. You know, and then I'm saying, we got married and everything that could go right went right from then on. You know, so. So, so you met her in the singles class? No, no, no. I met, actually, I met her, you know, uh, you know, just uh, met her, I, not, not in the singles class. Oh, no, 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 no. Because um, I made it clear to all those women that like, say, I'm sorry, I'm not looking for a wife right now. You know, they all kind of they stayed away from me. You anyway. had your <laughs> plans. <laughs> yeah. This guy's nuts. You know, but the point is that you know, the, first, the first time that's I That's a good her, story, Trevor. Yeah, I, 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 I'm for sure. That, that's a good seriously, story. I'm like... I'm like, I don't think so. This is not what this is. Not, I say, if this is God's, you know, if that if this is God's desire for my life, I don't think so. I hey, this ain't gonna happen. Well, lo and behold, you know, I didn't get a job until I finally, you know, married my wife. You know, so but uh, anyway, so so I've learned to where, you know, you have to look at things. You know, um, you know, it's it's, you know, it's not so much of your own thought process. You have to kind of look at the surrounding. Why is God? making this so important in my life right now you know but so i was obedient then i all, all was well so yeah so yeah. amen yeah did the notes bring any clarity to you about your struggles or self-call to call you to worship the lord did the notes do any of that to y'all any kind of clarity to worship the lord <clears throat> So in the, um, I guess the apply it section, uh, again, it just kind of hit me. So I'm, I'm going to read what it said and then talk. It says, what does true worship look like? Often we equate worship with our emotional response to moving music or recitation of poetic thoughts. True worship incorporates so much more. We worship Jesus as we forsake our agendas and joyfully surrender to his. We acknowledge God's worthiness, not just with words, but with our lives, thoughts, attitudes, and actions. 
Worship cannot be contained to a time, space, or experience. Heartfelt, authentic worship never remains private. Never remains private. That's interesting. The posture of a worshiping heart impacts others. And, you know, we talk about praying, you know, going into a closet to pray and all that other stuff. Uh, and kind of like, well, okay, I guess that's not worship, that's prayer. So if you're going to be worshiping, authentic worship, heartfelt worship, won't be done in the closet. It'll be done, you know, not in the war room, but in the, you know, a more open setting, which I thought was, I hadn't thought about that. I'm not sure I, how much I agree with it, but I, I thought that was an interesting uh, point that you know, I'm, I'm brother, and I yeah. just brought that up because when it comes to worshiping, it's not just about singing, you know, worshiping praise. You know, first of all, the, the, the centerpiece of worshiping is about our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. You have to have your mind there. You know, people sometimes people misconstrue worship as being, you know, uh, all the, you know, everybody's wearing the same dress, everybody's singing the same song, everybody's now, you know, the, the, the most important thing about worshiping is having Christ first. He has to be the center of everything, you know, so. You know, I kind of think of, um, you know, what John had said, too, that uh, that was probably one of the things that I, I thought of, too, is like, you know, going to a closet, you know, is that considered worship? But I would think is like, you know, another way when, you know, when Christians are persecuted, you know, there's times when they're able to speak and there's times when, you know, they just go quiet and uh, they honor who their God is. You know, is is that not considered worship when they turn the other cheek or, you know, bite their tongue when, you know, we might want to in the flesh, you know, react versus respond, whether it's in silence or whether it's um, um, with a kind word or a soft word potentially to hopefully uh, avert wrath or anger. You know, I think uh, I think yeah. worship is submitting to the Lord and glorifying the Lord and, and whatever he's commanded to do in a particular way. But what I would say to the author of the, of the written piece is what scripture says that worship is not silent or quiet. And uh, I'd love to see that in writing from the writer that said what you said. <laughs> yeah. Jesus expressed love for his disciples by washing their feet. What does this passage say Jesus knew at this moment? John 13, verses 1 through 5. Well, I know that Jesus said she did a good work on me when she did washing the feet. Mm -hmm. And then she also put another lady put ointment on her. Might have been the same one mm -hmm. overhead. That he knew the hour had come. Okay, you know, what's the uh, tomorrow? Judas would do what he was going to do, and um, he was going to have to suffer. Okay, Google set a timer for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Google, make a call. Hey, Google, remind me to water my plants every Monday. Anyone else? It's a fact question. Yep. One thing I, I I really like about this passage is in the in the previous verses Jesus kept saying my time has not come my time has not come right. now he knows his hour has come so there's a shift. And and um, like like Ernie was saying, he's gonna he knows he's gonna suffer and die on the cross, 
but uh, it's going to bring salvation to all. So, you know, he's doing his father's will. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Describe Jesus's love for his own. Describe Jesus's love for his own. He's always he's always serving, fully knowing the kind of people that he's with, right? Including Judas, right? He's doing all, you know, washing their feet. And so no matter the circumstance, he's on his way out, his plan is to leave. He still does it while fully serving. No matter what. So that was, that was kind of moving for me. Yeah. Yeah, nicely said. <clears throat> An example of, the, of love is Romans 5, 8. When we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. These were the men that Jesus chose. These were the men that would lay the foundation for the rest of, of us. These were the ones that are called apostles, and no one else could take upon that name because they were with Jesus. They saw Jesus. They saw him die and resurrect. And because of that, you know, they were his own because he chose them. Hmm. What stands out to you most vividly about the way Jesus displayed his love to the disciples? What stands out to you most vividly about the way Jesus displayed his love to the disciples? The scripture says that Jesus got up from his meal to wash their feet. So right in the middle of dinner, Jesus got up to wash their feet. I think it was to kind of make a point. I mean, I think typically he probably would have washed, people would have washed their feet as they came into the home. But not during dinner, not in the middle of it. But I think he made a point by doing it then. And I think just the humility. He took a servant's posture. He didn't wash their hands, didn't wash their head. He got down on the floor and washed their feet. Oh, he don't want to be scrubbed all over. Yeah, it makes me think of, you know, he came to serve, not to be served. And what a wonder to display of that in washing feet, the lowest part of our body that touches the, the dirt of the earth. And yet he washed them of their dirt on them and the dirt inside of them, just not one. Also, if he knew he was going to leave and he's washing their feet, I think it's to show that uh, like any true good leader is really a servant. Anytime I've had any foremen that, that, that are above me, that serve by bringing me information and materials and answering questions make the whole system work better. So I think Jesus was showing them that they were now going to have to go out and serve others in love so that others would be drawn to Jesus, not to go out, you know, with the humility of serving others so that they could be attracted to Jesus' love that he had for his disciples that are now going to be the leaders for the church. You know, so any leader is really a, ser a good servant. I think what Fabio noted in the previous question that was really impactful here because, you know, Jesus is displaying love, not just to his disciples, but to the sure. disciple who's going to betray him. Mm -hmm. Right, Judas is going to, you know, he knows what's about to go on, and yet he's, he's as far as we know, he's still washing Judas's feet. Amen. That's a, Amen. He's loving his enemy? Yeah. What is the significance of what Jesus knew in verse 1? <laughs> and his connection to the Passover festival. 
should also see Exodus 12 and John 1, verse 29. What is the significance of what Jesus knew in verse 1 and his connection to the Passover festival? Jesus was the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And his blood was going to be shed so that man would no longer be judged. During the Passover, lamb's blood was um, placed over the doors so that the um, so that the people were spared. And in the same way, God's blood shed for us allows us to be spared. So, uh... In the same token, it's a great foreshadow of the past, revealing the true, the true glory of God, finally manifesting himself perfectly in the sun and how the Passover points to Jesus as the Lamb of God, like Kevin had said. New wine. Jesus responded to Peter's protest. We say a lesson about spiritual cleansing and serving others. Jesus told Peter, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. What did he mean? Jesus told Peter, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. <coughs> <clears throat> something something i've been learning uh, i don't know if you all knew but i've been reintegrating myself with my wife to the catholic church right and and we've been taking that's what was why i couldn't be here last week because i was taking some catechism classes and one of the first lessons they talk about is the original sin right and how we have concupiscence i think that's how you say it which is the tendency to sin right so uh, we're going to have that regardless of whether we're following God's path or ways or not. And the way I see this passage is that, okay, we've taken God in our lives, so we're good, but we still have that tendency to be sinners. So, you know, yes, we're being guided towards a, a good path, but every so often we need to cleanse ourselves, plant, clean our feet. We have all the good intentions. We're practicing the ways, but we're still sinners. So we have to constantly be doing this and doing it for others. That's kind of the way I looked at it. I think for me, one of the, the, the wonder, most wonderful miracles is Jesus' first miracle. When we understand that the water of the word uh, is poured into these stone hearts and stone jars, and that it's the Lord that bathes us and turns that bath water into the wine that leads to eternal life by grace alone. Therefore, when they really have been bathed by the Lord, as he writes here, not all of you are clean, um, that we should love one another and uh, share the truth with one another in love, uh, you know, truth and love to understand it. It's, it's so wonderful to, to see that the bath that Jesus gives is for grace alone. And what we get to do and partake is sanctification and loving one another so that we can be cleansed of whatever um sins that we will continue to have you know but as we as we take in that word that that it's it's beautiful to see how Jesus washes us not a man not a pastor not a priest not an iman it is Jesus and Jesus alone that saves and bathes but we get to wash each other's feet so it's so beautiful yeah i was thinking that too uh and then so i I went and had to look up. I just felt like there must have been some more to it because it was, uh, but it, you guys are all over it. I just want to, I'm going to read. I know this isn't really a good practice that for a BSF group, but I'm going to read it anyway because I thought it was just really interesting and interesting enough to really dive in deep on here. So this is from a commentary. It says, the word translated wash in John 13, 5, 6, 8, 12, and 14 is nipto which means to wash a part of the body. But the word translated washed in John 13, 10, right, with Peter, 
is luo, which means to bathe all over. The distinction is important, for Jesus was trying to teach his disciples the importance of a holy walk. When a sinner trusts the Savior, he is bathed all over. His sins are washed away and forgiven, and their sins and iniquities will be remembered no more, right, from Hebrews. However, as a believer walks in this world, it's easy to become defiled. He does not need to be bathed all over again. He simply needs to have that defilement cleansed away. God promises to cleanse us when we confess our sins to him, right? First John 1, 9. And I thought, okay, now I get it. You've got, clean me all over. No, no, no. I've already, you're already cleansed all over. You are saved. But you still sin, right? That's what Fabio's point from the class is. You still sin. You still need to confess that sin, as Joseph said, and get to wash our feet to be humble in that and, and to show others our, our love and forgiveness. So, anyway, I, I just thought that was interesting. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Who in this passage was clean and who was not clean and why? Which describes you and why? Who in this passage was clean and was not clean and why? And which describes you and why did it describe you? I'll cheat. I'll say that the one that's not clean is the one that Jesus handed the uh, the the the, 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 the yeah the bread <laughs> the dipped bread to. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. And clean was everybody else in the room. <laughs> well, you just talked about spiritual cleaning. So if you didn't get spiritual clean, you're still dirty. Let's give it to Judas. Yep. I think in words of what, uh, you know, Paul would later write in one of the Corinthians, it's, uh, it's made clean because one had actual godly sorrow and the other one had the sorrow of the world. Looks similar in the flesh, but not in the heart. And Jesus knows which are. And blessedly, you know, you know, it's it's the right understanding of grace and not adding works to that lest any man should boast. I keep adding up for two different seeds on the cross. One asked Jesus for forgiveness, and Jesus said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. The other didn't ask to be forgiven. Very different hearts. Why is Jesus' act of washing the disciples' feet so surprising? You could also see Philippians 2, verses 1 through 10. Why is Jesus' act of washing the disciples' feet so surprising? <laughs> He's the king of kings, and he's always been... I, mean, I don't know all the kings get served on, but he humbled himself and he showed his love and washed his disciples' feet, showing his love. So it wasn't above, and nothing was above him. He was humble to take care of his servants. To me, you know, I was surprised because he was the king of kings, the Lord of lords, and, and everybody takes care of him. And he, I don't know. You know, I just, I just, I just believe that that's that's a way of, uh, you know, our Lord and Savior expressing Himself, saying that you know what, um, because you know, back in those days, um, you know, it's always the other way around. The servant does the work for the master, you know. But even this day and age, also too, you know, um, where, you know, if if you're a manager or a supervisor and then you're doing the work, you know, you're gonna go. Well, if I can do it, are you better don't say no. You know, I think it's 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 just one way of exemplifying, um, 
you know, a leadership to say, okay, well, if I can do it, then you are no less of a person to do it to somebody else. You know, it, it's, can you imagine if, if parents would just wash their kids' feet, you know, can, can you imagine what that would do, to, you know, for them? You know, um, so it's it just, again, I just see that. So it just, uh, you know, showing mm -hmm. that uh, his job is to be a servant, you know, and, and you, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, you're still a servant, you know, so. You know, just kind of thinking of the of the whole foot washing thing and, you know, thinking of other times that Jesus spoke about feet and dirtiness and stuff that, uh, like like all of us have said here, it, it's a great, a great show of love from a good fruit that is bearing good fruit, both in work and in, in the spirit of, you know, Christ's heart, so that we could do the same. And it shows great humility and humbleness and, you know... <laughs> It also makes me think of, um, you know, when, when Jesus says, hey, you know, he sends him out and, you know, he sends us, a, I think it was a 70 or 72, whatever version you have. And it's like, hey, whoever receives you, you know, bless them. And whoever does not receive you, you know, dust your feet off and move on to the next. And then to think after all that work is done, you know, they all come home, of course, with dirty feet because they're out in the world working and doing so forth. And yet, you know how 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 loving it is it let's say you ride back home you go back with your loved ones in this case our loved one being jesus and you know how, how he washes the disciples and you know if that one of those 70 had a wife how loving it would be for the wife to do the same for her husband or the husband to do the same for the wife just to show of that reciprocity that phileo love in an agape spirit What do you learn about humility and service in these passages? What do you learn about humility and service in these passages? <laughs> oh yeah, Jesus who did a very humbling deed of washing in the apostles' feet. That was kind of considered lowly in those days and he did that also with an example for them to do likewise. If Jesus could humble himself and serve others the way that he did, we have no excuses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to what uh, Ernie was saying before, right? Leaders should be humble in their dealings with people meaning I'm really not a better person than you and be a servant, you know, put others before others' interests before their own and help them along. But yeah, Ernie was talking about before. And and in this case, uh, Jesus being actually God making himself um, in the likeness of a servant human is as pretty much as humble as he can go from being God to serving the people that are going to go out and have to serve others. I mean, that's the example of what they've got to do so that they can show the love of God and they can bring them to him. That's, you know what I mean? That's displaying God's love at, at, at from being God to being a, uh, in, the, in, the, in the humility of a servant. I don't know. You know, it, it's kind of funny. That's like if you know you're going to get canned, right? And then the mm -hmm. same guy going to fire you, you turn around and say, well, you know, you, you, you went in and bought him lunch. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's a lot of pill to swallow. That's humility. You know, I remember one time I was going to leave, you know, I was going to leave a job, you know, and I, and I just said to, you know, to the, to the uh, VP, I said, you know what? I said, you know, uh, to God be the glory. And he looked at me like, are you crazy? You know, you and I just had a disagreement. And then you're telling me to God be the glory. I said, yes, to God be the glory. Yeah, I said, thank you very much. You know, I said, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy that, uh, you know, we came to this, you know, to this conclusion that, uh, again, to God be the glory. You just look at me like I'm, I'm strange saying that, you know, it's, it's part of just, you know, humility. You know, you know, I, I was raised to believe that uh, I am no, I'm no better than anybody. And nobody else is better than I am, you know. So, I mean, it's just that one of those ways of showing, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
Now, I might go outside after that. I might go scream and yell. <laughs> but but in the meantime, you know, you just have to, uh, you know, do things, you know, that glorify God, you know, so, yeah. How is God calling you to humbly serve others? For me, I put a uh, show compassion, be aware of others' needs, and be ready to show mercy and pray for them. Be always praying for them. You know, one of the things that it's, uh, and, and I said this too, I said, you know, for me, um, I do things because that is who I am. You know, I don't do things because I'm trying to appease somebody else. And I'll give you a prime example. It's, it's you know, it's, it's like with my, you know, my mother through marriage, you know. Um, you know, be, being a caregiver, it's, it's, it's not an easy job, you know, to where I always joke with, I say, look, you know, I said, I'm just paying back to you what you did for me when I was little, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, changing diapers and all that stuff. You, I mean, you, you know, it, it's, it takes a lot. You know, you have to truly, truly, you know, uh, willing to submit yourself to do those things. You know, um, I, I, that's why I, I have a great, great regards for caregivers because they do a lot that an average person will not do, you know. And, um, but again, like I said, you know, that's, that's, and, and what that does too, I keep saying to myself, you know, um, in most cases, apples don't fall that far from the tree. This is my wife's mother. Who knows? Maybe five or 10 years from now, I might be doing the same thing to my wife, you know? But again, for me, I, 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 I do things because this is, you know, serving for me is what it's, it's my 10, it's God's gift for me. You know, I, I mean, I, I always said I will serve him until he calls me home. You know, um, we are not, even though we are Christians, but uh, it's like the word says, uh, you know, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. People don't, some people don't like to serve. It's some people like, you know, like, you know, Brother Marshall, you know, so yourself, as, I mean, you hang around a lot of uh, people that goes across the country. They don't, they just want to stay in the U.S. They don't want to go to some place and start you know, seeing something that is different from what they are used to. So again, not everybody is called to go overseas, to go be, uh, you know, uh, to, to go fellowship. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word, but, you know, uh, but I just can't remember right now. So it's, it's, it's a gift. You know, it's a gift that, uh, that if you have it, you know, use that gift, you know, so. It's it's also in line with when it says like no greater love than when a person loves his brother and <laughs> life down for them. So when he in humility came down, it manifested in flesh, Jesus, and died for us and paid for our sins. That act of humility is being from creator to flesh to feeling our pain and suffering and dying for us and shedding blood because we can't give any more than our shedding of blood, that act of humility, and then still to uh, show the humility of uh, giving love to those that are even better training is just the uh, character and nature of God displaying his love on how we should be with the people we love, or even the people we don't love, to represent him right, rightly, you know? I think I think one thing that comes in my mind thinking about what Ernest and John and, and all of us said is uh, probably sounds cliche, but, uh, you know, just kind of something that popped in my head right now is, you know, what what better or even what greater way is there to serve than to worship? And what better way is there to worship than to serve according to the way the Lord, your God, has called us to do in humility and humbleness and love? with patience and kindness and goodness so that others can see the Lord of our lives guiding us in this way that is different than the ways of the world to really see how Jesus is not just our teacher and then is our Lord, but rather as the Lord speaks here, he corrects it did where they see the Lord through our serving and our worship in that humility 
And then maybe they'll be one of, maybe they'll want to be taught by them. And then we see what the Lord does in, in that respect. Hopefully their mind will change to be in the right order versus just taking the work and using it for their self game, but rather like the good managers, you know, taking that work, representing their Lord and seeing what the Lord allows him to do, whether he moves them away or he pushes them closer in that business or ministry or place of family or, you know, whatever the specifics are. <coughs> What blessings have you experienced through serving others? Hey, bro, I was just going to quickly say one more thing, too. I think, you know, for us being a believer, you know, I, I it, we, we need to have some sense of clarity that when you're serving, you shouldn't have these expectations that I'm going to get something back in return. You know, quite a few people, they, they turn their back against God because they, well, I'm doing all these things. How come I'm not getting things back in return? And these are the things that, uh, you know, the so-called um, make you feel good preaching, make you feel good teaching. You know, serving, it's not, it's not, a, it, it's not that easy. You know, there's a lot of sacrifice that you have to make when you're serving. So my, you know, my, my plea is that when you're serving, are you not seeing things in return? You know, you might not see it now, but... You know, God's timing is always perfect. Or sometimes we have this notion that I'm serving, you're expecting something big. You know, God's reward towards your life doesn't have to be big at all. You know, the fact that he woke you up this morning, mm -hmm. set you on your way, that's a blessing. Yes, sir. I mean, many people went to bed last night if you woke up this morning. But mm -hmm. we have this notion thinking if I'm serving, if I'm going to Iraq, if I'm going to all these places, you know, to minister to people, well, I should be able to pay my rent. I shouldn't have any struggles. Wrong again. Sometimes the more you serve, the more hell you're going to catch. Yes. So you just have to be mindful. No, seriously. You, the, right. the more you serve. Amen. I mean, you just, you just wonder, why, why am I doing all those things? And why am I not getting nothing? So that's why it's very critical when you're serving, do not have any expectations because the <coughs> timing is perfect. He's a way maker. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, all this stuff that we are doing right now, we might not even have, we might not even apply all the things to our life, you know, until we get to glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. And these are the things that some people don't want to hear it, you know, be, because they think, oh, why are you saying this to me? You know, I just want to, you know, I love Lord. I mean, I love the Lord. I have this expectation. It doesn't work that way, you know, so. What blessings have you experienced through serving others? Waking up this morning. Yep. One thing, one thing that I've noticed is, is as we exercise faith written in the word of God, the blessings will come just like uh, Trevor said, but they're not always peaches and cream. They could become mm -hmm. forms of, hey, next week we're going to have a mom. You know what? Next week, let's have this one over there going on. But bustling, as I kind of wrote earlier, it's like, you know, I was uh, kind of surprised to ask for to do an invocation yesterday for my baseball group since I'm now in San Antonio versus where I normally am out in the country working. And kind of one of the things that I expected is as soon as I come into town with the patches that I wear and the Lord that I say um, and don't shy away from, you know, um, as I get closer to Babylon or bigger cities, the more that I know this uh, hatred of Christ will manifest. But it was sooner than I thought, it, you know. It was uh, it was sooner than I thought. So, um, you know, drop the name of Jesus in a room and then you're going to see what that room is like. And and you'll be blessed, like like Trevor said, it's not it's not all peaches and cream. But after that, after it was over, you know, there were a couple of gentlemen that came over and asked more about stuff. And I got to share Jesus and they asked about some of the ministry we're doing and stuff. So, uh, you know, got to invite them to BSF. So when the enemy attacks, the Lord will also give you great comfort behind that so don't be afraid you know let's serve and let's stand in the lord you know i mean a good example i can name like three people i mean they seem to be like i'm looking through the screen they are really next to each other you know brother tony brother david brother tracy i mean you guys knew what you've gone through you know just the, towards the end of last year 
and the beginning of this year. You know, and then you show up every Tuesday for the Bible study. You study the word, right? And then you're asking yourself, I'm doing all these things. Why am I going through all this headache? Why am I going through all this trouble? But again, the blessing is that he woke you up this morning. Each and every one of you guys, he woke you up this morning. You were able to attend, you know, the Bible study. That's a blessing. <laughs> you know, and, and, and but again, we have this notion just, I mean, we're all human. As long as we live in this flesh, we're going to have some stinking thinking. You know? <laughs> so all I'm just saying is that you are being blessed. You know, you are expressing blessing. It might, it might not be in a bigger way, you know? I mean, I'll, I'll give you guys a prime example. And I'm not, I'm not trying to take the time. So this past, this past mm -hmm. Sunday was the time that my wife's supposed to go to church. So I can stay home and watch my mother-in-law, right? So I went to church. I was there by five o'clock in the morning, set everything up, right? Okay, everything was turned on. All they have to do is just click, they go live. So here I'm on YouTube, nothing is coming up. Okay, my flesh is trying to tell me, well, Trevor, you might as well have just stay there. Or I should have, why do I do all these things? But then I said to myself, five o'clock in the morning, that's not the best neighborhood. I didn't have any car struggle. I made it home safely. I said, to God, be, be, to God be the glory. Thank you so much. So people came in because everybody that was supposed to come in, they were late. And I have every reason to be all mad. But I said, no, I'm not going to get mad. I thank God that I was able to go to my house of worship, house of prayer to set things up. I made it back home safely, you know, by six o'clock in the morning. You know, so all I'm just saying is that we need to be encouraged if we don't see you know, what we presume to be a big blessing, there are some little blessings that God has for you that you just have to somehow discern what those blessings are. You know, a prime example, you know, I mean, Brother Tracy, what your part of your family members are going through right now, that could have been you, right? <coughs> but it's not. And you might learn something from, you know, their sickness. You know, from that shortcoming. So God always used a lot of things, you know, to wake us up and constantly tell us we need to fix our eyes on Him. So I'm grateful. You know, regardless, that's why I tell God, regardless of what my shortcomings are, regardless of what my struggles are, the fact that He woke me up this morning, you know, and I can still touch my toes, I can still walk, I can still talk, mm -hmm. and I can still eat. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Yep. So, so am I not blessed because I can't touch my toes? <laughs> <laughs> so, brother Marshall, but look at it this way. He gave you the voice to speak that I can't touch my toes. Some people they can touch, they can touch their toes, but they can't say it, right? Yep. <laughs> I know they're down there somewhere. <laughs> you know, many of us are blessed because we don't need a phone and we can save money that way. <laughs> Jesus announced his betrayal to his disciples. Ooh. How did Judas' betrayal fulfill scripture? You could also see Psalms 41 9. <coughs> How did Judas' betrayal fulfill scripture? Well, Psalms 41 9 says, even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. That was a, that was a verse on Sundays. Which was a betrayal and treachery. Mm. I think just kind of a small comment to that, that uh, it's beautiful that, that Psalms write that uh, it was his friend, not his brother. And teaches us to see the difference between thinking in the flesh or thinking in the spirit. What encouragement do you find or what lessons might you learn from this? Mm. 
Well, there's a lot of things, but like if Judas went and killed himself, first of all, that doesn't show a repentant heart. So when Jesus is washing his feet, that would have been a good time for him to see what Jesus was doing in humility, change his heart, be loving, and not betray him. That's one thing. But not only did he not ever recognize that, he went and killed himself because he never repented because he never in humility saw that he did wrong. So that's one thing. But I guess another thing, like when Trevor was saying about doing good, good servanthood things for others and sometimes things get tougher, I think that's part of God refining us to see if we're really genuine or pure or doing it in the right heart. I think when things, when you do good things and things get tough, it's only so that God can refine and make you even more pure. And it's really a test if you're doing it for your own uh, benefit or if you're doing it for love for him. And that's how he grows us to continually try and do right and continue to be persecuted and <clears throat> the ones that keep persevering are the ones that I think God is growing and showing uh, their uh, how would you call it their unfaithful um, love and what he intended for us to do for others if, if they have the right servant's heart I guess I think one Does of the people make... kind of going with earnest is one of the wonderful I guess simple things for for me that it, it uh, that the Lord helps me with is to look how Christ, in this case John writing uh, what's written here, shows us to go back to the Old Testament to look for the glory of God uh, come to perfection here in this particular story, and to see how the Old Testament is in many ways and shapes pointing to this moment of glorious creation, the glory of, of God, and to, to go back to the Old Testament and look with an open heart that is Christ-led and, and a mind that is led by the Spirit to look for these beautiful little golden pieces of scriptures or nuggets that we can say, wow, that's great. And, you know, you look at the whole chapter 41, it starts, how blessed is he who considers the helpless. And so we're talking about blessing. It's always amazing to see how the Lord puts old and new together without looking and looking. It's like, wow, even the psalm kind of matches up uh, more than just the one verse with this particular section of scripture, just to see how sovereign God is, how foreknowing, you know, how all powerful, all wonderful, you know, just how great God truly is be beyond our finite minds and to see that he reveals himself all over the place and to keep looking. So that's what that means. How might you explain Judah's decision to betray Jesus despite witnessing Jesus' is powerful public ministry. Said Satan gained a foothold in his thieving heart. I mean, his heart was so hardened that he doesn't even see anything else. You know, it's and, and we are that way too. You know, once our heart is hearkened and once we, we can't stand somebody, we want to do whatever we can. You know, we we are so we are so blindsided we can't see left nor see right. You know. Uh you know, I think the only the only the only way he was that he, he was asking for forgiveness is by killing himself because he realized, oh, I was wrong. That's why it's very critical when you see that you've done something wrong, has got to forgive you right away. That asking for, for that forgiveness will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding, you know. It's kind of like an example would be like when King Saul of Israel was, uh, was eventually, it says the spirit departed from him. He, he was 
rebellious. He never repented. God pulled away from him. He died in his sin. Um, but at the same time, uh, he had the chance to, to turn and he didn't. To me, those are examples of people that mostly everybody that came to God fell stray. But then a lot of them that came back to God, God says in Hebrews 11, like David was declared righteous in his sight, along with many others. Those are the ones that repented and came back. But there's also a lot of evidence of people that never repented, like like uh, Saul or Judas Iscariot. There's others. And to me, the, those are our examples if we're going to stay separated or, or we're going to turn around and come back. Because uh, we have our chances to 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 realize what he's doing. I mean, it's it's sad to. I mean, like that I fail because the examples are there and they're clear. We can turn and do what's right, or we can stay stubborn and focus on the world and not focus on him. And there's examples of both. <laughs> Brother Aaron, the word says the wages of sin is death. You know what happened to Judas? He killed himself. You know, I mean, literally. You know, so so my point is that, you know, I we I think sometimes we don't we don't we don't take you know the word seriously, you know, uh, because everything seems to be going well. But you are dying. You are dying slowly when you constantly. You know, in sinful behavior. Mm -hmm. Define betrayal in your own words. Why is betrayal a particularly painful offense? Breaking or violating someone's trust or confidence. And uh, it's particularly painful because it's usually uh, or it can be very personal. Yeah. That, that's why that's why I always tell people that you know before you start spreading your own gospel, be careful who you talk to. You know because your enemy, if the person that's going to really hurt you, I tell people that sometimes the biggest enemy that you have is the person laying next to you in your bed. So you have to be careful. You just don't go spreading, you know, telling people every, you know, what you're going. You, I mean, again, you discern things. You know, I, I mean, it hurts when the person that that you really care about, the person that you love, say things about you. But that is when you don't take also to things into your own hand and try to take care of that person. You just say, Lord, please, you know, just give me that, give me that peace, give me that kindness. You know, that humility to just pretend, you know, and I, when I say pretend, because sometimes that's what we do. We pretend that it doesn't bother us. But, in you know, in our own quiet time, we go, OK, that son of a clown did me wrong. You know, so again, it, it's just it's, it's very, very critical that, uh, you know, that is where you look at right now. You don't have to go behind the door and telling somebody else, you know, what your issues are. You know, we mm -hmm. have this we have this straight line between us and God, you know, let him know what your, you know, what your heart, you know, what your struggles are, you know, because the same person that you say things to <laughs> you know, go behind you, you know, and, uh, and, and say things, you know, and then you get mad because that's the last place you expect to hear about what you just discussed with someone, you know. What was the benefit of Jesus's warning to disciples about his betrayal? What was the benefit of Jesus' warning to his disciples about his betrayal? They will be ready for it when it happened, and uh, it would strengthen their faith. We see that Jesus warned about this time, and, it, and when it happens, you know, well, well, but what happened, though? <laughs> you know, they, they cut off the soldier's ear, and they just went, you know, chaos instead of, you know, restraint. Why was Jesus troubled in his spirit? Why was Jesus troubled in his spirit? He would carry the weight of the world, the sin of the world. 
uh, he would endure what he was about to endure, all the physical trauma and, and then the ultimate separation from his father, temporary separation from his father. That's what I initially wrote down, Tony. Uh, and, and then I went, because I thought, well, the other thing it could be, and this is what the, all the commentators seem to agree on, is that even though Jesus knew long before it happened that a friend would betray him, he was nonetheless grieved. He was, you know, Judas had been around him for, you know, three years of ministry. He was a friend. He was a disciple. He was, you know, the chosen. And yet, at the moment that it finally came that the betrayal happened, yeah. Jesus was grieved. Yes, somebody said it earlier. It it, it was personal. It is personal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And brother Marshall, and I'm glad you said that because it's amazing. You know, can any one of us, when you know somebody's going to hurt you, you know, why would you want to draw even closer to that person? Yeah, that's that, that, I know, that's the amazing Jesus that we have. Even though, you. yes, I was, mean that is that, that is an ultimate sacrifice. Uh, yeah, you know that somebody's going to hurt you. Because he knows it all. He knows the beginning. He knows the, the he knows the end. But still, you know, he just uh, that's why I tell people that when you see something, when you hear something, don't park yourself there. Fix your eyes. You fix your eyes on the prize because the prize, you know, Christ fixed his eyes on his Father, knowing fully well that when it's all said and done, he's going to give him the victory. And the victory that he rose again, right? Mm-hmm. He rose again, and that is why it's very critical that you can't. I, 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 like I said, I can't even say I can do it myself. If I know somebody's going to poison me, why would I want to eat their food? You know, so I mean, it's just it, the word is very simple. I think sometimes we make it so complicated. You know, back in those days, they don't have all the tools that we have now, mm -hmm. and we need to take advantage of those tools when when God is speaking to you. You know, I mean, why would you go and see just because he said he loves you and he's going to save, go stand in front of a 16 wheeler truck coming at, at you at 150 miles an hour? Makes no sense. You know, but some of us do. Oh, the Lord is going to save me. Really? Okay. He might save you, but you, you, know, you might not go to hell, but you'll go to heaven. But it's one of those self inflicted pain that we cost ourselves. You know, and that, you know, our Lord and Savior knew all this pain, all this suffering ahead of time. But he stood there, you know, fixed his eyes on his, on his Lord and, you know, on his dad, knowing that he will, he will, you know, he will exalt him from all that stuff that uh, was done to him. Yeah. I think the, also it's called the living word is because as a small, like, I might have thought a lot of those things in the beginning and I might see them different now. Even though, um, in other words, as you evolve through life and go through different experiences, you kind of see the word working in a different way. So there's people that you love that betray you, that you've done more for anybody that betray you. And in that way, you can see that this person I gave all my love to that, that was my friend that betrayed me. Uh, the example is Jesus still loved, even though he was betrayed, he still kept being nice even though in other words at the end of the day god's gonna have a final judgment and the final um final final payment you know what i mean that's how do we respond to our betrayal is just trusting and knowing god does love us and that he'll work it out and take care of it and we just love him because he went through what we have He's went through what we went through, but his was in a much bigger way than we could ever imagine. But we've still been betrayed and hurt by people we love, and we have to keep going forward and, you know, ask for him to to bless us better next time, you know. And that's we, we need to pray for God's to give us grace. Yes, yeah. yeah. Going, going along with what kind of earnest it said is like, you know, made me think of uh, people in the past that, uh, you know, everyone has someone that's betrayed them and the the sentiment, the feelings, the emotions, the, um, the way that we each probably handle it, you know, and, and of course, you can always think is like, you know, how did I how did I as a person handle it before being Christian? And then how did I as a person handle it after becoming uh, a Christian? 
and and to be that um, that renewed mind, renewed heart when the Lord has washed us, and uh, and that understanding to see how how loving the Lord is, and yet God can still be hurt, which is big, the scriptures would speak a lot of. <laughs> how the Father's hurt, how the Son hurts, you know, both in the flesh and in the spirit, you know, clearly here since you know He had a body of flesh. You know, so that he would save all his people and, uh, you know, buy the world and uh, do what's right according to what God has commanded and designed. And, um, you know, it, 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 um, it for me shows great love that God has and that people can hurt God um, and how sin, you know, like like Trevor said, you know, wages of sin is death. But. He desires none to perish, yet, you know, we have that freedom to choose what is right, and we have that freedom to choose what is wrong. And when you find that person that betrays, you know, just kind of, I was looking through the, you know, quick word search, every time you see the word, it, it appears almost every time that you type in the word betray in the in a electronic Bible, it basically reveals someone that has blasphemed the spirit of God as in a, a non-believer and how they're just friends and not really brothers and sisters. And the hope is that they will receive that grace like Bob had talked about, but we can't make them do it. You know, ultimately they will, you know, choose whether they'll receive it or not. But I know this, that anyone has betrayed me, even if you offer forgiveness and, and kindness and, and wish to reconcile with them, they may not come around. They will just go and hide um, because they know they truly stand in the truth and they are not really seeking forgiveness. They don't really have sorrow that is godly. And like Ernest had said earlier, they have their own idea of sorrow and they just want to wallow in it, unfortunately. And, you know, pray for them to receive that grace that is that is given, you know, to, to everyone. Hopefully they receive it. So Yeah, and that's our example when he was dying and said, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Uh, there's a huge difference in the way uh we used to uh respond to what if we so call ourselves Christians the way that we should respond, because that's the example, even as he's being killed, he's still asking for them to be forgiven by God because he knows ultimately God is going to have the judgment on them. So that's our example. Even though it's hard. Yeah. Jesus released Judah to quickly carry out his betrayal. From verses 27 and 30 describe the state of Judah's heart. And the time of day this event occurred. Satan had control of his heart and it was night. Yep. Yep. He didn't submit to God. He couldn't resist Satan. And so he did what he did. <laughs> What warning or guidance do you receive from this? What warning or guidance do you receive from this? Submit to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Just be aware that Satan does his worst work at night, or his best work, however you want to call it, at night. Yeah. yeah. So go to bed early. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hang out all night. There's nothing good that's going to come from it. <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah. knows all hearts. Don't lie to him. <laughs> yeah. What do you learn about Jesus from the way he interacted with Judas, even while knowing his betrayal was certain? What did you learn about Jesus from the way he interacted with Judas, even while knowing that his betrayal was certain? Well, when he said what you're going to do, do quickly, means he already knew he was going to do it. But he didn't want to suffer and feel. That's why he said if there's any other uh, 
when he asked uh, <clears throat> and prayed if he could take the cup away of suffering, otherwise God's will be done because he knew he was going to have to endure that pain and suffering and he just wanted to be behind because he knew he was going to suffer in a big way. But he still allowed it when he knew that he had, like he said, a legion of angels could come in and change or take care of it or authority or power to change it. But he he still didn't <clears throat> because uh, he loved us that much to cover sin. I'll take the unpopular view. Jesus is fulfilling scripture according to the way it needs to happen. It's been written, has been washed, you know, been cited by God before the foundation of the world, in which this chapter continually, one will look at it as a calling him to repentance, but rather uh, that won't fulfill the scriptures and Psalms. So as he continues in this chapter, the news tightens a little bit more and more and more and more. And it's the right time for him to go do what he's supposed to do, because that's what's been written way back in Psalms and before that. So, you know, he calls him out just a little bit of time, just, you know, wash the feet, one of you. And he just progressively steps to where it's like, hey, here's the time. Go out there, Satan, do what you need to do. <laughs> yeah. The the notes in my Bible said basically that uh, giving Judas this bread was almost like a final appeal to accept his love. Of course, <laughs> Judas rejected it. Jesus calls his followers to selfless servanthood. How have Jesus' word and actions recorded in John 13, verses 1 through 30, fortified your appreciation of our confidence in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I said, he knew what was going to happen, but he loved me enough to go through with it. Even when I betray him, he still has mercy on me. What did you learn in this passage about Jesus' humility and his desire for his people? And what will you put into practice? Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And then you add the other piece of scripture in the New Testament says, especially the believers, because his blood bought everyone. But it doesn't get applied to everyone at uh, Judgment Day. So lean into that blood and lean into that resurrection. And don't tempt the Lord your God if he truly actually for real is your God. Just look at Judas, the apostle that went to hell. Anybody else? What did you learn in this passage about Jesus' humility and his desire for his people? And what will you put into practice? Well, he humbled himself to the lowest point that anyone can come to, and that's by hanging on the cross. <laughs> for me, it's that, you know, um, what I learned is that um, that you know, I'm mean, I'm going to continue to serve. Me I'm, not going to, I'm not going to take my eyes off of him, knowing fully well that when it's all said and done, I am glory bound. I mean, I am glory bound. That means that is, you know, that is a wonderful and that is good news. Knowing fully well that you know I'm going to go through all this hell, you know, even within the midst of my enemies. But when it's all said and done, I am glory bound. Yep. Glory bound. Glory bound. Anybody have any prayer requests?
I have a friend, um, Sam, that has COVID. He's like 83 years old. Hmm. And it's gotten him down uh, pretty good right now, just for um, quick healing for him. Tony, how did your benefits meeting go? Oh, real good. Real good. Um, uh, had a lot of positive uh, news that came out of that. So, uh, so, uh, so now I'm going to be applying for more. Uh, they give me insight on what to apply for to get more benefits. So it, it was all good. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Congratulations. Prayer for my grandson, Liam. He's Liam. getting sick off and on, off and on with uh, stomach viruses. And, and uh, he'll go two weeks and then boom, he'll he'll get sick. And he'll go another two weeks and come down wow. again. Sometimes. Hey, Pedro, pray, pray, for, pray for me to have a good baseball season ahead. I'll start next, well, actually I start Friday. So uh, I will probably not see you guys from here to the end of the the semester unless uh, I'm sick or something. So it's always a joy to to spend the time that I have uh, in the off season with y'all on Tuesdays, and that hopefully uh, uh, the Lord will give me protection with working in town and uh, a blessing to these new men that uh, that hopefully I can you know um, share some good news with them and they'll be receptive and. You know, or you know what may be, but uh, that my body will sustain itself and uh, make it through, uh, and uh, and to give thanks for for all the time I get to spend with with all y'all whenever I get an opportunity to. It's always uh, I'll tell this to my other BSF graph classes, like you know the love that is in this room. I I can't compare it to any other any other uh, BSF class that I, I've been to and stuff. It uh, it really is the um, a very loving place in, in Jesus here. So I, I'm very thankful for all of you. Amen. Thanks. Thank you. Amen. Amen. How's your sisters, Tracy? Uh, no updates. Uh, I guess the prayers are just for uh, you know, continued, uh, hopefully successful treatment. And um, our God, the great physician, intervenes and just heals them. In Jesus' name, he will. Yeah. Ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, you will find. Knock. Thank you. Pray for, <clears throat> pray for continued healing uh, for my knee. Going on four weeks this Thursday. Plan to go back to work next Tuesday. I would take it slow. I actually get to drive in two days. Um, <laughs> but we're coming along. Coming along well, getting more. The big thing is flexibility and range of motion now. Amen. Amen. So progressing as uh, fast as you were before, or is it slowed down to a more moderate pace? I think I made some bigger strides in the first two weeks. Um, I'm I'm just seeing more strength. Um, the exercises that I do are I find them to be much easier. So I'm just doing more rep, you know, more reps of them. But uh, I'm also ready to go back to work. I'm tired of being home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I don't, I don't even go outside much. So you know, sitting in this house, yeah, it gets kind of old. But I just have a regiment that I go through, and it keeps me busy throughout most of the day. So between icing and exercising and biking and you name it, mm -hmm. I got another machine. That for Tony, I, I checked into um, some VA benefits as well, and the VA is going to pay for this machine to help with my flexibility. So wow. grateful, Thanks. grateful. Man, and, and you're set so back you guys, next Tuesday. For, the, for those of you guys that are retired in the military, remember that you also do have VA benefits. That you're also <clears throat> just gives you some variety of your benefits. That's what I found out. Pedro, can you pray for my uh, father-in-law? He uh, 
He's he's recovering from COVID. Oh no. What's his name? Um, Manuel. Manuel. I mean, also pray for my needs as they're very stiff right now, and I'll probably have to go back to the office next week or the following okay. because my physical therapy is coming to a close very soon. And I, I quite didn't hear you said pray for your, your knee. His knees. Oh, his knees. <laughs> yeah. Knees. Two knees. Oh, his knees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought the same knees thing. Now, but I still can't hear very good. Not his knees. <laughs> his knees. <laughs> How about his nephew? <laughs> his knees. <laughs> Pray for him, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He really needs to go back to work. <laughs> How about, how about you, Pedro, with all your falls you've had? Oh, I'm good. I'm still walking and kicking. <laughs> Blurry. <laughs> yeah. That's I, yesterday. I went by his house, and um, I'm, I'm pretty scratched up and messed up. I had a oh. trimming my sister's trees in Hondo, and I got hit like three times, and the third one knocked me out. Cutting the trees, trying to do it by myself with a helper, and uh, those big old tree trunks that hit me. It oh, I got three fractures on my head and fractured my elbow, and my arm. Wow, oh, dude, me. no, no, it hurt a little bit, you know, but it got me blurry. But I'm still kicking, I, I didn't see Jesus yet, but I'm, I'm still waiting on that. <laughs> You're trying to see him though, with all that, <laughs> my goodness. Oh. Yeah, I, I think you're safer on that Varley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what I've been going through, trying to finish my sister's house and, and um and be done with it. I have to take a breather because it's been it's been like two months of like nonstop. Get out of church, go straight work on her house. And I've been doing like 10 to 14 hours a day. Some days I've been there like 16 hours. Yeah, trying to get her moved wow. in the house. So yeah, uh, it's been a workout. Pedro, how's Curtis doing? Well, Curtis is doing good. I actually talked to him today. Um, he's coming back. He's flying in San Antonio Friday night. I pick him up, and his wife's coming down with him from California, and they're gonna go through his paperwork because he still has that that bag and those pump things on, on him. But he's in a doctor in California, and then they're gonna they're gonna fly back to California on Monday. He's just coming home to get some paperwork for his, his uh, retirement and stuff. Is he going to move to California? Eventually. Mm. Eventually. Right now, he's just trying to make things work for him and his wife right now in California, basically. But he'll be back with us soon, I hope. Mm, hope so. Mm. I'm still checking on his house every day and getting all his mail, get out together, throw his junk mail, and then I'm mailing him FedEx all his mail to California, to his wife's house. Hey, can we keep uh, uh, Allie's daughter in prayer, yeah. Ava? Yeah, she's battling this cancer, and keep her in prayer until Jesus takes that cancer out. Ava, she's really young, if I remember right. Yeah, she's like 13. I don't think 13 years old. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Pedro, can you add Can you add a, a pastor? I went to visit a church this past weekend from one of the other sisters that helps with this. And their pastor has cancer. Um, I'll visit them every maybe three months, four months. And I uh, just find out he had cancer. So hopefully the Lord will uh, pull him through it. It's a real small congregation, and there's probably no replacements. So hopefully, the Lord will, um, you know, um, pull him through, Lord willing. So I don't know. It's it's pass. Pass. Also, a prayer for the Torres family as they move to uh, what they call Utah. He just finished seminary, so 
that's going to be his mission challenge to witness to those Mormons. That's the tough group. Wow. I tried to witness to a Mormon and he was so stubborn. And I, oh, I have the Bible you use, but you also have the silly book of Mormon, as you know, when you use that more than the Bible. I, I shared an office with that guy for about a year. And it's the Taurus family, right? We had a Taurus family, so they're going to have a challenge winning those moments over, but with the Lord's <laughs> uh, uh, guidance and everything and prayer, I think they're going to be able to do it. At least some. All right. Anyone else? Or right, we'll start the prayer. Father God, first of all, I just want to come to you and thank you for what you do in our lives and allowing us that BSF, Lord. I want to thank you for these men, Lord, and, and for protecting them and, and keeping them going, Lord. Lord Gilbert's friend, he's 83 years old, Lord, and um, he has COVID. We're asking for a, a quick, holistic healing on him, Lord, because COVID is nasty, Lord. It's done a lot of bad things to a lot of people, Lord, and we just ask to touch that gentleman, Lord, and and because of his age and stuff, Lord, he's more acceptable, different things, Lord. And we're asking that that you take those, those side effects from COVID and everything that's going to come with it, Lord, and just wipe it away and let him heal up, Lord, to get back to normal, get his life going again for he can glorify you, Lord. Also, Lord, Tony, Lord, his grandson, Liam, he's been sick with a stomach virus, Lord. We don't know if it's a bug or if it's something else, but whatever it is, Lord, we ask that. Quick healing on that young man, Lord, on that yeah. child, Lord, and, and just yeah. touch his stomach, Lord, and whatever is boiling up in his stomach, just take it away, Lord, because you're the last call. You're the doctor, Lord. You're the ultimate yes. doctor. Yes. Whatever you say goes, Lord. Also, Lord, our, our brother Joseph, he's coming up to baseball season, Lord. We ask that you keep him healthy, Lord, and keep him strong and, and give him opportunities in order to spread your word, Lord, and and to reach other empires or players or people around him, Lord. Open doors for him to be able to spread your word, Lord, and to share your love, Lord, and just to love on people, Lord. Also, Lord, his friend. We don't know the pastor's name, Lord, but, but you know, Lord. You know the hearts. We ask you to touch that pastor, Lord. And that cancer, it's a nasty thing, Lord. He's he needing you, Lord. He needs you need to be there to, to serve you, Lord, and, and to lead people to you, Lord. You need to just touch that pastor, Lord, and just be with him, Lord. And the more things are going to be all right. And he's going to get healed, Lord, and he's going to be with you one day, one day, Lord. Rather, it's now or later, it's your will, Lord. Also, Lord, our brother Tracy, his two sisters are still fighting MS and cancer, Lord. We ask that these treatments would, would start working good on them and start a healing process on them to get their life back to normal, to get them going again, Lord, for they, they can enjoy the new brother they found, Lord, and they can come to worship you and to know you, Lord. Also, Lord, David's brother-in-law, I'm sorry, David's father-in-law, the one we call dad, he's, he's an awesome man. I, mean, I love seeing his smile on Facebook all the time, Lord. We ask mm. that you touch him, Lord. He's going through COVID, and he's up there in years also, Lord, and we just ask you to touch him, Lord, and to be with him and just surround him with a healing touch and a warm blanket of love, Lord. That Lord is going to be all right. And he's going to heal up, Lord, and he's going to be out in the street again, eating in all those restaurants again and see that happy go smile face, Lord, because he loves you, Lord, and, and he needs you, Lord. Yes. Also, yes, Lord. Our, our, our brother Kevin, he had that knee surgery, Lord, and we thank you that he had a good outcome, Lord. We also ask for a healing for him, a healing for his need that way he could get back to work and go normal, Lord, and, and just, just be there for his patients, Lord. That way he can spread your word and, and heal people, Lord, through you, Lord, because you guide him, Lord. We're all vessels, and, and we love you, Lord, and we just ask that you give him a holistic healing on that need, Lord, that when he goes back to work, he'll he'll be 100% plus, Lord. He can do what he needs to do and, and just show your love and your faith, Lord, at, at his job, at his Practice, Lord. Also, Lord, our brother Ed, Lord, we ask that you touch his knees, Lord, because he's gonna be going back to work, Lord, and and make it make it so that he can just walk around and and not have to use that walking stick so much, Lord, and stuff. And it, he, he just heals up, Lord, and be able to, to 
to have better mobility, better movement, Lord, and just it's just to keep going, Lord. And also that Taurus family, Lord, they're they're challenged moving to Utah to witness to the um, Mormons, Lord. We ask that you that you fill him with the words, with your words, Lord, on what you say. And we ask you to open floodgates of heaven for him, Lord, to find them a place for finances, for the words to say, the places to go, Lord, to spread your word, to show your ministry, Lord, to share your word, Lord. Also, Lord, her brother Antonio, Allie, her 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 daughter, Lord, she's 13 years old and she's a child, Lord. She's she's so she's still a baby. And she has that nasty word cancer, Lord. We we ask, we still ask, we still ask, Lord, for a holistic healing on her, Lord. That she'll be touched. That she'll be touched in a holistic way, Lord. That, that she'll be better, Lord, and grow up to be a good young lady. Mm -hmm. To serve you, Lord, to be with you, Lord. Let, let her healing be a testimony of, of your love and your grace, Lord, mm -hmm. and the miracles that only you could provide, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for what you've done in our lives and what you're going to do still in our lives, Lord. And I just ask you to keep these men safe, Lord, to and from work and their families, Lord, and just, just keep the word of God alive in them and with them, Lord, and give them opportunities to reach other people, and to know what you're saying, what to do, and to love on people, Lord. I just want to thank you again, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro. God bless. I love y'all guys. And